بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم We are live with the third episode of Spiritual Sundays Alhamdulillah, we are blessed and honored to have Dr. Haydarpur uh, with us for today's session Inshallah, Dr. Haydarpur will be talking to us about um, theology and how theology can facilitate our spiritual journey. Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyyil azim. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi at-tayyibin at-tahirin. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of you. Tonight as you know Sheikh Shawad mentioned and also you have seen in the you know uh, in his you know page that we are going to talk about the how uh, theology can facilitate our spiritual journey. Uh, you know, by theology, I meant here our etiquadat, our belief. And, you know, um, although when we are talking about the you know, Islamic sciences, we discuss this as a two different topics. So we have theology, we have etiquadat, then we have spirituality. But inshallah, today we are going to discuss it and see how the close relation that they have together and also sometimes we, we may think that a kind of like theology is a kind of introductory science for spirituality but when we go in the when we reach the terms of you know practice we see that they are not separable from each other so inshallah we are going to talk about these two topics in this way uh anyway when we talk about as i said theology i mean the beliefs and etiquadot that we have so what does it mean that I am a believer? Does it mean that only I declare something on my time and I declare that I'm a believer, for example, in God, and then I practice some uh, rituals superficially, some acts, and then does it the criteria for me to be a believer? According to the Quran, belief and belief in the religion and in God is not something like it's something is a condition of the heart is a change that has you know, has to has to happen in the heart not something that i can say on my time and then the actions that i do should be the outcome of the change that has happened in my heart there are in, actually today i'm going to just going to talk about you know according to the verses of the quran and also some hadith so whatever is i'm saying is based on the verses of the quran sometimes i will read them and mention some of them according to the, you know how much time permits anyway so we have this verse in the quran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu amanu billah oh those you have believed you consider yourselves a believer. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Allah is addressing the you know, kind of like people that they uh, acknowledge themselves as believers. And they say, and then Allah says, amanu, believe. It means that just saying on the tongue doesn't mean that you are a believer. Again, in another verse, we read that, qalat al-arabu amanna. Some people that they are called Arab, so they said, we have believed, amanna. We, we have belief, we have, you know, we have believing. We are believers. And then I'll just call them to Omenu. You haven't believed yet. You say we are believers. But But the belief has not entered in your heart. So belief is something, a change that has to happen in the heart. And is a condition of the heart. Then the actions, the words that we are saying, whatever we are doing according, you know, as a criteria of a believer should be the outcome of this condition of the heart. So, it means that we should examine our belief. So, you know, sometimes the problems, the doubt, the uncertainty that comes to our heart and... Uh, during the different circumstances of the life, the difficulties, any different situations that we are we have during our life, sometimes we feel that you know our belief is shaken, and you know sometimes we feel that my religion cannot help me, and sometimes even worse than that, some people even may think that the source of their problem is, for example, is their religion. 
So if something happens like this, it means that we haven't established our belief in the right way. Otherwise, the religion is something that can help us in different situations. Even in the, some difficulties and problems that is out of our control, how to deal with it if, if we have established our belief in a no right way. So and in this situation, religion should help us how to, how to de deal, how to make decisions, how to bear those difficulties, not what we can't do as a, in a kind of like problem, the religion itself. And it's so important, you know, religion, belief is not part of our life. So that we do, you know, we live, we go on in our life, and sometimes also we deal with something and a kind of, you know, for example, few hours in a masjid, or for example, do some charity work, and then we are satisfied that I have done enough for my religion, now I'm going to go on with my own life. Religion is something that is going, my belief that comes through the religion, is something that just, it's something that gives the real meaning to our life. Religion beliefs is a reality something that can give the meaning to whole our life so religion is something even more than that religion is something that is going to define our the reality of ourselves the reality of the world around us and you know why we have come to this world it's going to religion is something that's going to explain everything for us in this world So, if beliefs and religion is not doing, does not such a role in our life, it means that we have to come back. We have to come back and review and try to establish everything from the beginning again. Uh, I think that there are some steps in establishing the belief and believe through the religion in a right way. It seems that there are three steps if we are going to do it in a right way. First, knowledge and understanding, ma'rifa, which we call it ma'rifa. So first we need ma'rifa and knowledge. Then love and mahabba. And the third, then will and intention comes. So first of all, we need ma'rifa, understanding of uh, God, our Lord, as a creator, the world around us, the creation, the, the whole world of existence, and I'm saying the world, I doesn't mean just this world, not the whole world of the creation, and ourselves. Because, you know, when you go on a trip, you are going on a holiday, for example, so you, go, you are going to go somewhere, for example, for a month. So maybe a few months in advance, you started searching in Google. Everything from the place that you are going to see where you are going to stay, how much you are going to stay, do you have enough money to stay there? Is there any guy that can help you find the beautiful places there? And then we are going to live in this world. When I'm saying world, I don't mean just this world of dunya. I mean we are going, going to live in this world of existence forever. The part that we are living in this dunya is a kind of just very short part of it. So we need to know everything. We need to know who am I, where am I going to live in this world after that, who is my guide? What should I do? I should, I need, we need to know everything. That's why we need to consider and spend enough amount of time thinking, searching, and understanding. Because this is not something that just we leave it kind of like in our spare time or read some book if I'm interested in. No, it's, in, it's so important. We have to know all these kind of things. Anyway, so we need to know then, as I said, love and shall I, you know, step by step, I, you know, explain them. Then the mahabba comes, and then after mahabba, then will and irada, will and intention, irada and niya. Anyway, God has given us two tools, two important tools as for our understanding, for our ma'rifah, which is, has been installed in our nature, fitra and aql. 
fitra is a inner knowledge which is in our nature it is, has given fitra and aql has given to every human beings what is the fitra so fitra is some knowledge of uh, good values you know human good values like for example honesty kindness truth all these kind of, kind of good values and then a, a kind of desire and inclination towards them to go towards you not know, going towards that and like them and want them in addition to that in our fetra we have a general understanding of an absolute being and then again going towards that an absolute being a perfect being and then desire to go towards that absolute and perfect being all our has been installed in our fetra in our nature and has been given to everyone and then we also have aql the tool for reasoning thinking that helps that this fetra and aql they work together and aql helps the fetra to go towards the no right direction and find the right that you no know, source of perfection anyway but in addition to that then god also that part is so beautiful because you know in addition to that then we have revelation so what does revelation means revelation means that then god starts talking to us communication to human beings that part is so beautiful so he sent god has sent so many prophets throughout the history قولوا آمنا بالله وما أنزل علينا ده. This is part believing. This all this prophet is part of our belief. Actually, part of our religion. قولوا آمنا بالله. Say they say we believe in God. وما أنزل علينا ده. Whatever has been sent to us. وما أنزل علينا ده. إبراهيم إسماعيل إسحاق يعقوب. All the prophets from Prophet Adam. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. All of them they have came. We have one hundred twenty four thousand of prophets. They have come to give us. and he uses Quran says qul huwa naba'un azim this is a big news they all of them they have come to tell us a big news and what is this big news this big news that prophets they have come to tell us is that we are going to main point point to main part it has the one is that we are we have not come to this world by accident no it's a scary because non believers they think that for example they have the materialist people they think that they have come to this world by chance by some accident and they lot is going to perish by death so it's a scary thing to think like that but the prophets has come to tell us that no you haven't you haven't come to this world with accident or chance you have a creator some come that someone a being that has created you out of love so you have you have come here and you have a creator that someone you have a lord that is going to take care of you and also your life is not going to finish by death actually this is the real beginning of your life and then also this uh, revelation it helps us the one that you know their fetra and aql has not worked in a kind of proper way and when they were looking for that perfect being they have they made a mistake for example some people they found some other thing that they you know god for, for in the past in the time of the when the quran came or even now for some people for example they 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 accept something that they has created for example like you know sun or moon or even they made something as they you know uh, idols and they started worship worshiping them as they you know kind of that source of being that perfect being that they were looking for so even now we have some people like this and also we have some people that they think for example the position money or some other things is they are god because they were looking for it they had it in their fetra but they made a mistake so the come you no know, revelation came to tell them that no you are, have made a mistake you, you know you have left your creator and they have found something from his creation and you are looking at that as a perfect being 
طلای دلی داستان الله و خالق و کل شهر God is the creator of everything and we have only one God و ما ارسلنا من قبل که من رسول we haven't sent any messenger except we have asked them to tell you that انه لا اله الا انا there is no God except me anyway so this is the news that we have God we have Lord we have someone here in this world yes our God has created this world all the creation we are still in the stage of ma'rifah so we know that رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَعْتَى كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلْقَهُ خَلْقَهُ ثُمَّ حَدَى God has created everything and then guided everything towards their perfection but human beings are different says لَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ yes human beings are part of this creation that they have been created and guided towards their perfection but human beings are different says فَضَّ اللَّهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّا خَلَقْنَا they have advantage over many of the creatures why because God created us for himself and made us in a way that you know we grow he guided us but our growth and our perfection is towards him towards him who is the absolute perfect being إذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جائل في الأرض خليفة He made us our representative on the earth And then he said He told the ملائكة That إني خالق بشرا من تين إذا سبيته ونفخت فيه من روحي He says I brought some of my spirit in them I'm not explaining what does this mean But whatever it means It means that we belong to God We are a kind of like you know, you are going to be a kind of representative of him. You are going to be, try to be like him. Our growth, our guidance is going to tell us that you are growing towards being, you know, like, resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the absolute being. So it's so beautiful. We are from him. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا لَهِ رَاجِعُونَ We are for him. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ Sometimes they translate it that we are from him. But it says, Inna lillah. We are for him. God has created us for himself. We are going towards him. This is our destination. Our destination is no going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and the same Quran that talks about hell and heaven for the after death. In the same Quran, we read that what is our destination? Our destination is not hell and heaven. Our destination in hereafter is meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our goal. This is our destination. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, you know, uh, different people, for example, the ones that they are guided and the ones that they are not guided, how he describes them. He says, إِنَّ la yarjuna laqa'ana. The ones that they don't have any hope and wish to meet us. And he describes it in this way. They are happy with this world. They don't have a hope and wish to come and meet me. But then about the people that they are guided, actually accepted the guidance and they are in the right direction, he says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Those that they have this hope and wish to meet their Lord. They are the ones that they are on the right path. So now we are going towards Him. We should know Him. I mentioned in the previous session that we had that مَنْ أَعْفَ اللَّهُ أَحَبَّهُ Whoever knows God, we love Him. That's why I'm saying the ma'rifah. You are still the step of ma'rifah. If we don't love him, because we don't know him. Allah is lovable. Allah our ma'bud. And you know, our ma'bud should be worshipable. We say, we say worshipping. 
So our Lord should be worshipable. Worship, the me real meaning of worship is that when you see the beauty and adama and greatness in something, then you worship him. And Allah is really lovable. He really is worshipable. Is our worship is not like this. There is a problem in our knowledge. We don't know him. Actually, we have to try to understand. We have to try to know him. First, I mention it. I'm not, you know, I'm not just giving you some very headings. Everything that I'm saying, kind of like headings. Then, inshallah, we can go and you know look for it. And maybe you know, and I'm just I'm reviewing the thing that you know for you. But anyway, if there is something that you don't know and you need to reflect, just reflect and go to find your answer and go to find your solution and find that ma'rifa. Just I give you first a general. You know, idea, and then I go through the Quran to see, to find, you know, to, be, to, to give you some kind of uh, phrases and headings to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran. First, I said that Allah is that the perfect being. If, for example, I am going to help myself, that is something that I myself am doing now. If I'm trying to help myself to realize and understand this beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a general way is that whatever you feel beauty in it in this world, whether there is a flower, a view, a nature, whatever that you find it, you see it in this world, in the creation, and you see the beauty and a kind of a freshness of perfection in it. And then it made you to praise it. This is a fragrance of beauty and perfection of God. Because God is its creator. And even when you're praising something in this world, you are praising God. This is a one of, uh, or part of the real meaning of Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamd means praise. It says, Alhamd, all the praise belongs to God. Whatever you are praising in his creation, is you are actually praising God. So when you see a fragrance, a small beauty, whatever in this world, and it you know, makes your heart, that really from the your bottom of your heart, you're praising, you feel good and pleasure in seeing it and feeling it and experiencing it. You are experiencing the fragrance of you know, beauty of God. This is a general way. And then let's now go and look at the Quran and see the attributes and qualities of God in the Quran. Just I'm mentioning a few of them. Our Creator, our Lord, only one. If our fetra is leading us towards finding the truth in this world, God is the truth. He is light, nur, quddus, razzaq, who is the one who gives sustenance to everyone, even the ones that they are sinful, not for the just muttaqin and good people. No, he is the giver, giver of the sustenance up to everyone. Wahhab, wahhab means he gives a lot. These are qualities that has been mentioned in the Quran. Then Karim. And then he is Shakur. He thanks. He has given us everything, power, guidance, everything that whatever good we do, he thanks us. He is a Hakim, Khabir, he is wise, he knows everything. He hears. He knows everything. So if I know that, if I reflect in these qualities, then by no chance in some circumstances I say, I feel that God has forgotten, God forgotten me. He doesn't hear what I'm asking. Here he says, He hears everything. He knows everything. He is Azim. He is great. He is Muta'ali. But at the same time, But I'm near to my people. He is al Qadir. He has so much power. Actually, he has all the power is in his hand. And then he says, Allah Am I not enough for my people? So tawakkal ala al-Aziz al-Rahim. Trust me. Put your trust on me. Rely on me. 
هلای از غفار He forgives غفور تواب غفار means the one who forgives a lot تواب is the one that accepts the you know, repentance a lot So it means that if you make mistakes and comes to me How many times is okay? Come back to me I forgive you Rabbukalghani He is binyaz, he is a kind of his reach. Lahum of his samawat wal ard, everything belongs to him. Whatever exists belongs to him. He is mehraban, he is latif. He is rahim, he is arhamur rahimin. He is the most loving being. He is, and then khayrur rahimin. He is the best of lovers, of loving beings. But at the same time that he is ghani, he is rich, he has everything, then but he loves me. And then this beautiful phrase, yes. Alhamdulillah, From God, his love for us is much, much more beautiful. Why? Because if we love him, we need him. But he loves us when he doesn't need us. And he loves everyone, even the sinful people. Even the Pharaoh, all of you have heard the story of the Pharaoh that from the very beginning Allah told Musa and his brother that go to Pharaoh, he has he is rebellious against me, but go to him. But talk to him in a very soft way, maybe he comes back. So he doesn't lose his hope on us. He loves all of us, even the ones that they are so much sinful. And then we reach Ar-Rahman. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many qualities in the Quran. He has mentioned actually his qualities in the Quran. But normally we say that, for example, that only Allah is as his name. But among all his qualities, only Ar-Rahman is the uh, word and the name that he has chosen as he has chosen as his proper name. And he has used it. In the Quran as his proper name. Ar-Rahman, even for meaning of Ar-Rahman, if I'm going to talk, it needs lots of hours. Although I'm not expert in this area, but if a real Mufassir, if a mystic wants to explain this Ar-Rahman, it means month, just explain what does it Ar-Rahman means. Ar-Rahman means a kind of just literal meaning of Ar-Rahman is a is, it is a love that no one is excluded from this love. And, believe, and a kind of when you look at the Quran and read the Quran and reflect and you realize that Ar-Rahman is the quality that actually governs the all other qualities. Ar-Rahman is the one that directs and manages, for example, his power, his knowledge, his wisdom, everything. And they are un under this love, they work, and then that's one of the reasons that then this creation came to existence. Anyway, so we need this marifa. These were just very, very few kind of headings, but we know and we have to search and read to have this that to have the enough ma'rifah and knowledge of our God of our Lord <clears throat> and then with thinking and reflecting we have to then get it to our heart we have to let that it goes then in our heart so that then we have some understanding of this beautiful being then love comes then this mahabba starts Man عرف الله أحبه Whoever knows God will love him. So if this love hasn't started in my heart, it means still I don't know him. And we need this love to move forward. This love has to be started so that gives me motivation. Because then when this mahabba came, then, it, then I can have Arada, the next step. Arada. Then I say, I want you. I want to come to you. You are the source of beauty and perfection 
that in my heart I had desire for such a being, you are the one. But I need this love. So that this love gives me motivation. This love gives me you know, a str a strength to go towards him. There is a very beautiful hadith which said, قَدْ أَلَمْتُ أَنَّ أَقْضَرَ الزَّادَ الرَّاحَ لِإِلَيْكِ أَزْمُ إِرَادَةٍ لِيَخْدَارُكَ بِهَا I know for sure that the best provision for the one who intends to travel to you is true and a strong willpower by which he chooses you. We need to know him so that this love starts in their heart. Then we choose him and then we go towards him. Then now, inshallah, if it happens in my heart, what should I do? No part, at the beginning actually, I, just, I have just given part of my heart to him. But then I have to clean the rest and provide the rest of my heart for him. Because Al-Qalbu Haramullah, Fala Tuskin Haramullah Allah. I have to give him whole my heart. This is the place and God in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says La yasa'uni arri wa la sama'i But yasa'uni qalbu abdi al-mu'min So the, our heart should be given completely to God And of course it doesn't contradict with loving you know, his people And actually when as much as we give our heart to God Then we have more capacity and potential to love his people But a selfish love so self selfless love, yes. Not a selfish love, but thank you. A selfless love. And we can love, you know, his people more and more. And when our heart is completely filled with his love and is completely clean, then we have the capacity to love all his people as he loves them. I don't have time to explain, just I was going to give as a parenthesis parenthes that when I'm saying that we have to clean our heart, of course, we have to clean it from all the bad qualities because we have to have a pure heart when we are inviting God in our heart and also whatever, anything else beside God. But I just wanted to mention, as I said, as a parenthesis, that doesn't mean that then in, in this case we shouldn't love anyone. No, then we have a capacity to love all his people as a selfless love anyway so now we are then in this case is a time that now we are when this mahabba comes in part of our love our you know, heart then we are going to start our journey but you know here we can talk about remembrance and zikr because not just i part of my heart belongs to god of course inshallah if the time reaches that I reach this point that I give at least part of my heart to God then I start loving him but also I have other things in my heart so sometimes I think of God sometimes I think of other things this is the time that if I'm going to you know move forward then I have to kind of have that full attention towards my goal and purpose so I have to remember him I have to try to remember him it takes time because other things are also are there so I kind of I need some to put some effort to remember him during the day so that each moment of my life I try to do something which takes me towards him I want you this is my will and erada as I said and then uh, I also mentioned the intention then each moment of our life by remembering him, then I try to put any decision, any action, whatever I'm doing, by intention that I do, in a way that it takes me you no know, forward towards him. So this is a, so it's a kind of, again, a small explanation of the remembrance, that remembrance it has two main uh, important points. One... The, it means that the attention that I should have, that 
the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this way and go its world this journey should be my main attention in this world and also the second point is that remember I think something that actually again has to be in the heart then maybe sometimes also for example it comes uh, by saying some word in my time but the main uh, meaning of the remembrance in is the time that my heart has attention towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the other point that I was going to mention is that and I'm saying moving to, forward towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it doesn't mean that for example he is Allah, sitting there Allah, of course Allah doesn't have a place and then I'm going there I'm alone in my journey till the time that I reach him no he doesn't as I, I bet I'm talking sorry because not the, the human word is difficult to, to explain these kind of things with the human word when I'm saying there here doesn't mean that there is a place for God but I have to put it in this no worldly word there is no other way to you know explain that but anyway but I'm saying moving for you know, towards him it doesn't mean that he has sit there and just waiting for me no he is with me he is with us and through our journey he is with us as our anise as our moonness as our friend I don't know how much are you familiar with Anis and Muness and no Anis and Muness means your intimate friend. When you try to remember him with this with his beauties, then gradually, gradually, this relation of owns and you know acquaintance. Sometimes in English they say you get used to him. You feel good and comfortable in his company. That gradually he you know he becomes your intimate friend and on your journey he helps you he he will be with you and you know but still there is even more than that i mean still there is more than just you know being our friend he is he is going to be our lover you know um, we say that um, in I don't know have you ever experienced it being in love with someone a real love I mean not just a kind of love that many people are they are saying love and love and love but a real love I don't know has happened to you that you really be in love with someone or if not you may have seen in the movies and you may have heard about something like this a real love in the poets poem of some poets you see how does it look like i was reading a dua of uh, imam sajjad alayhi salam with munajat khams ashar and you know some phrases I was saying, oh my God, they are so beautiful, they are so real. He says, for example, I can't, you know, he says, my heart is burning and this burn in my heart doesn't cool except I can reach you. I don't have a night, I don't have a day. I want you. You are the joy of my eyes. You know, my English doesn't help me to just explain this word. You know, when you see, the, 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 when, uh, when the heart of a, beloved, a lover is just yearning for, you know, his beloved, how he explains. So just go and read the du'as and see how Ma'asuminis are explaining this relation that they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm saying that our relation with God has a next level and more than just friendship it goes to a, a stage of love I don't know in Farsi and Arabic after Mahabba we say Aishq we say Aishq which is a kind of intensive level of love that is it's supposed to happen between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know one of the question that I myself had that especially when I was thinking of sufferings in this world 
for myself, for other people, different difficult sufferings, then I was thinking, oh my God, it's difficult, really, this world is difficult. Then I was thinking about this relation that we are supposed to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is based on love. Then I was thinking, you know, when a lover leeches his beloved, you see, then there is nothing in the world that matters to them. They can bear everything. And then I realized that, yes, so that, that is the reason. And then when I read these du'as of Ma'asumin, then I realized that, yes, that's the thing. You know, when we look at the life of the prophets and imams, we see that they had a very, very tough life. But they could bear it. Why? Because they had the joy of loving God, God's Anna, their Lord. And this joy, this pleasure, when you reach, when you have that, then nothing else matters to you. You are able, it gives you so much power and joy. Anyway. So this is what we should end it up to it. And it's a kind of gives us a new life. I know that I have not been able to explain everything. Of course, in a way that I wanted to explain. But just at the end, I'm going to tell you three things. First, as a revision, as a summary. If you don't love God, which is the source of beauty and perfection, who is the one who loves you a lot without needing you. It means that, let's see I, if I am in this situation, it means that I don't know him. And you know, I'm gonna go this morning in my prayer and tell him, I don't know you. But I know that you are very beautiful. Being with you, loving you has so much joy. And I confess that I don't know you. That's why I don't enjoy when I'm praying. That's why I, I, I'm thinking of some other things. And then I ask, go to my you know, spiritual teacher. I say, how can I concentrate and focus when I'm praying? That's obvious. Because I don't know my God. If I know him, then I yearn for to go to him, to worship him, to talk to him. And really, I talk to him. Then nothing can matter to me. When a beloved reaches his... You no, know, I don't know in English literature, do we have Romeo and Juliet? In Farsi, we have Lelian and Majnun. I have seen it in movies. When they reach to each other, nothing matters, even if the storm comes. So why when I'm praying? I'm just thinking of everything except God because I don't know him. That's why I haven't... I, I'm not in love with him. So I'm going to go and confess to him that, I, yes, I don't know him. But I know that you are like this. Although it hasn't arrived in my heart, but I know, I know that I'm certain that, you know, God is like this. And tell him, please help me to know you. Second point. If the religion that you believe in right now doesn't help you to not be a, you know, a scared and doesn't give you a strength to deal with your life with the different situations especially when the situations that are not in your control the religion cannot help you be sure that this ver version of the religion that you are believing believing it is a night is, is not the right version of the religion because religion has come to give us information ma'arifa in a way that helps us in our life. Not religion itself becomes something that scares us even sometimes. No. The role of religion is that to give us some ma'arifa that helps us to not be scared in this world. As I first mentioned in the beginning, that the Quran says, Qul on Azim Bashir gives them a good news. This is a good news, religion is good news that's gonna help us in our life. Not something that by itself is gonna scare us. This is the real meaning of the religion. And the third, as I said, 
there is such a pleasure that even we can experience it in this world the pleasure of love is there some people have experienced it and it's a loss if we don't so we should look for it we should try to understand it how and the first step is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself again that I want to be a good you know, lover of you and then my main fear of in this world would be from myself and the mistake that I may do so that prevents me of experiencing such a joy and pleasure of loving that beautiful being not of him not for that beautiful and loving thing he says I love you is source of beauty and everything so if I gonna have fear I have to fear of the mis my own mistakes that prevents me to reach him not from him that is such a lovely being I think it's enough for tonight. I hope I have been able to deliver a little bit of what we should look for in this world.